This patient has a total cataract which is intumescent. There is also a history of uveitis but the eye is quiet since last 3 months. AC is shallow, pupil is small with presence of posterior sinicae. The plan is to do a phaco emulsification with sinicolysis and use a pupil expansion device under steroid cover. Let's look at the steps of surgery. This is the maximum pharmacological dilatation that could be achieved that is around 4 mm. Side ports are created. The visible portion of entry capsule is stained with trypan blue dye under an air bubble. Anterior chamber is formed with viscoelastic. Using the same blunt viscoelastic cannula, gentle sweeping motions are done on the undersurface of iris to release the sinicae. Taking care not to damage the entry capsule. Main port is created using keratop. Viscoelastic is injected under the pupillary margin to make space for BHEX ring. The anterior chamber is kept underfilled as overfilling will push the iris against the anterior capsule. BHEX ring is introduced into the anterior chamber. The leading flange is tucked under the iris. Now the alternate flanges need to be tucked under the iris. Flanges held pulled centrally and placed beneath the iris. Main and side port incisions are used to gain access towards the opposite flange. Once alternate flanges are tucked in, we get a dilated hexagonal pupil. Now trypan blue dye is painted over the entry capsule to achieve staining of the remaining area. Excess dye is washed. More cohesive viscoelastic is injected to counter the intumescence of the lens and also to achieve further viscometriasis. I am planning to do a two-step capsular excess in this case. Rexis is initiated using a cystitome. You can see the milky fluid coming out. A small rexis is first made using capsular excess forceps. And now I'm using the bimanuals to aspirate the milky fluid and decompress the bag. All the loose swollen cortex is removed by milking. Once the bag is sufficiently decompressed, cut is given on the smaller rexes using micro scissors. And then using CRF, a larger rexus is made. A cross-action CRF is preferred as it causes less of viscoelastic loss. If the capsular rexus is too small, it may result in post-operative capsular phimosis. So the aim is to get a capsular rexus that is around 5.5 mm. This will also prevent formation of posterior sinica between iris and entry capsule post-operatively. Hydro dissection is done. It is important to tap on the nucleus in between to avoid posterior entrapment of fluid. Nucleus rotation is achieved. Phaco emulsification is begun. Loose cortex is aspirated. I'm planning to do a vertical chop in this case. A small trench is made. And then tip is buried into the nucleus. Vacuum is maintained and chopper is brought towards the tip and then sideways. It is important to do a in the back chopping as size of the nucleus is larger than that of the ring. Once smaller fragments are obtained they can be emulsified in the pupillary plane. In total cataracts, there is no epinuclear sheet protecting the PC, so the emulsification needs to be very controlled. Once enough space is created, even a blunt Sinsky hook can be used to achieve horizontal chop of the nucleus.
before removing the last piece viscoelastic is injected this viscoelastic will act as artificial epinucleus keeping the posterior capsule away from the operating plane emulsification of the last piece has to be done in a very controlled manner to avoid sudden collapse of anterior chamber which can result in pc rent There is not much cortical matter left behind as this was a total cataract. Complete cortical cleanup is important to avoid postoperative inflammation and PCO formation. However, in uveitic cataracts, some posterior capsular plaques may be present which refuse to come out. Single piece acrylic intraocular lenses inserted into the bag and dialed using a dialer. Now it's the time to remove the BHEX ring under viscoelastic. Hold the flange, pull it centrally, disengage the ring completely, and just pull it out. Viscoelastic is removed. Complete removal allows contact of posterior capsule with intraocular lens, reducing chances of PCO. This is the postoperative picture of the patient. The patient had an uncorrected visual acuity of 66. Thanks for watching.